Well, welcome everybody. I see people are starting to file in. Take the first seat available. Something like that. If you can hear me, raise your hand in the I can hear my hand raising control panel. I see people raising their hands. Yay. How are we doing? Pretty close. All right. Unable to hear audio. Um, somebody says, I assume many of you can hear audio. Um, Um, yeah. All right. All right. So I have one person who can't hear the audio, which is not uncommon, I guess. All right. Oh, okay. Now you can hear me. So let's, um, <clears throat> a common question I'm asked is, how can I get real estate leads when there's a pandemic? You know, I can't do open houses. There's no, you know, door knocking is sort of out, you know, hanging flyers on people, door, door hangers on people's doorknobs, all that sort of stuff. So what we want to do is look at some of the things that we might be able to do effectively, even if there's a pandemic, that would produce leads and produce contracts and produce closings. Now, one of the things that I've kind of noticed, I hope I didn't mess that up too much, is that um, uh, I'm going to, I don't know what the webcam looks like, but I'm going to leave it the way it is, I guess. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is that what many real estate agents want is to, they want something easy, right? Something cheap, quick, easy and preferably seller leads that uh, where they're very cooperative and they are willing to pay a high commission and they're not going to ask for too much so it's going to be a real easy sale um, that's not really the way the business works right now i'm not saying that sometimes stuff doesn't just fall into your lap but usually you have to work to do it there's very few things i can't think of any where just doing a little bit of it for a short period of time is going to produce uh, meaningful results. This is true for farming, it's true for social media, and it's true for YouTube. I just, I also want to say sort of as a opening that what I'm doing on YouTube right now is, is certainly not perfect. It's probably not even great. I'm evolving and I'm getting better at it. And so I'm going to be talking about best practices, but admitting that I'm not doing all of the best practices yet, but I'm getting there. And I'm going to show you what I've done so far and things that you might find valuable in moving yourself along quickly. So I'm not as good as some of the people I'm going to show you, not that polished. Um, however, I may be more successful than many of you right that are listening to me today i might be doing better than you so you know and if you're interested in doing more with youtube and you're in my coaching program um this is something that we could talk about right so just to oops, get started for some reason there we go um and there's some handouts which i'm going to maybe refer to here and there as we go along but why would you want to you know why youtube and one of the most obvious answers to why YouTube is it's owned by Google. It's the number two search engine in the world after Google. The number two search engine is YouTube. After that is Bing. After that is Twitter. Um, it's also, uh, other than yesterday when YouTube went down for a while, 
it's an extremely stable platform, right? Google doesn't collapse worldwide very often, but they did that yesterday. And the other thing is, is that Google recognizes that videos require more work, that they're, they're harder to produce than writing something, and they maybe respect that a little bit more. Because when we get down to the point is how is me making videos going to actually get me making commission checks, right? When we get to, to connecting those two together, um, part of it is going to depend upon how Google treats our videos and what they're going to do with them. We'll talk about that. So other re reasons why you might want to leverage YouTube marketing, SEO, which stands for search engine optimization is relatively easy. Right, I'm going to spend some time on some of these individually, but uh, a little bit later. But SEO is search engine optimization, and what you want if you are marketing something, a service, a product, is that when somebody searches for that service or that product, you come up, let's say, on the first page of Google. How do you get on the first page of Google results on their search engine, the SERP, S-E-R-P, the search engine re results page? That's kind of hard, right? For example, if you're looking for homes for sale in San Jose, right, you're competing against Zillow and Redfin and Trulia and Realtor.com and a bunch of other places. But you may notice when you do searches that in the middle, sort of in a break from the list of things, a list of sites that Google gives you, there's usually a band in the middle and that band is filled with videos. So one of the things that Google would like to do is they like to push YouTube videos in search engine results. So you may not be able to upset Zillow and Redfin for their spot in the search engine results, but you might get your video on that page. YouTube is great for inbound marketing. <clears throat> inbound marketing is the opposite of door knocking, right? It's the opposite of cold calling, right? That's called outbound marketing. Inbound marketing is when people contact you. And one of the things that I know is that most real estate agents, including me, would much rather have people contact me than me to have to contact them. Now, normally to get somebody to contact me, I'm gonna to have to spend maybe a lot of money. I'm gonna to have to have postcards, I'm gonna to have to run ads in Facebook, I'm gonna to have to, I'm gonna to have to spend money in order to push my message out in front of people such that they contact me. Inbound marketing means that I have content that they may be interested in, which they find organically when they search. And what, what when you hear somebody, what organically means not through pay-per-click advertising, right? So that'll become important later when we talk about how much does this cost. In some ways, videos are easier to produce than, well, many other things. Like, like for example, for me to write a blog post or an article is, I don't know, not impossible, but not necessarily high on my list. I'm I would prefer, I know you're gonna you're gonna find this hard to believe, I'd prefer to just talk, right? I, I would prefer. So I would much rather to turn on the video and explain something and talk about something than actually have to sit down and write it out. Right now we're gonna talk about how to make the video look good and there's some what's called post-production work, editing and that sort of stuff. Uh, videos are more engaging. Um, they've done a lot of research and they find that people retain far more information when they're watching a video than when they're simply reading something. Some estimates are you get 90% when you're visually watching, hearing and looking at a video in terms of the information versus 10% when it's written down. I'm not swearing by those statistics. I'm just saying I read them on the internet, so it's got to be true. But I find that true for myself. If I want to learn something or if I'm interested in something, I'll typically find a YouTube video. And because that way it's a lot less work, right? I don't have to read anything. That's that's very that's that's work, right? I, I want somebody to read it to me. And by the way, what I always do on YouTube is I change the speed of the video to make it faster so that I get the information quicker. 
being original is valued on YouTube. If you're an original, then this is good. Now, one of the things that there's always a pushback against is um, many real estate agents would rather that all the social media marketing, including YouTube marketing, all be done for them by somebody else, usually very inexpensively, but successfully. But that doesn't exist, right? You understand? That's that's a fantasy. There isn't that thing. Is I certainly haven't heard of it. So what that requires is is that you be original, have some original ideas, hopefully, and go out and do some stuff, right? And you're going to be much more likely to stand up from the competition. Um, I didn't do a poll because that would have required me thinking too far in advance but you can we could do a silent poll um and how many of you in fact you can raise your hand if you don't know how to raise your hand this would be a good time to learn how many of you have your own youtube channel raise your hand now i don't necessarily mean a youtube account i mean a channel Right, you're. At, I mean, everybody that has Gmail or Google has YouTube access. How many of you have a channel, your own YouTube channel? Right, and um, well, I see a couple of. I see ver, f far fewer hands go up. So the reality is, is that virtual most agents aren't doing this. Most of them are not doing this. And some of them that are doing it aren't doing it very well. So this is something that you could do that most agents aren't doing that could get you leads. You also can repurpose your video content. I'm gonna show you how to do that and by putting it on a blog or doing something else with it. If the video is done right, it can be used in other places. Could I have a video on a website? Let's say I have a website. Could I put videos that I've made on the website? If I have a blog, could I have blog articles about what my videos are about and have the video in the blog, right? Could I post the video on Twitter and could I post it on LinkedIn and post it? You get the idea. Um, once you've made that video, you can use it in a lot of different ways. And a way to create what is a more personalized real estate sales funnel. And I'm going to talk a little bit about targeting, which I think is coming up next. But the typical real estate agent when i know you guys aren't typical because you're here and you're obviously a cut above the, the so when i'm putting down the the muggles out there of real estate obviously i'm not talking about you guys right but most real estate agents want to sell anything to anybody anywhere right you know sort of the message is luxury homes mansions or mobile homes i don't i'm your agent you want to buy in silicon valley you want to buy in the east bay you want to buy in san francisco you want to buy in sacramento i'm your agent you want to do commercial you want to do condos i'm your you're an investor i'm right you, you understand that there's there at that point you become it becomes meaningless right um because you can't be everything to everybody however what we want to do is to identify particular groups of people that we wish to target. And we're gonna use YouTube as a way of targeting them and getting some leads. Um, I don't know why that's doing that. All right, and so there's, and I'm gonna show you some examples of channels. And what I'm going to do is I'm, my channel needs work, right? You know, I'm uh, not, uh, my channel needs work. But what I'm going to do is this is what I'm logged into my YouTube account, All right? Let me just go up here and my channel. Now, um, I, we're working on the background image. I'll talk more about that. Um, I'm going to make a little bit of modifications on the title. You can see here are some recent videos. I have a playlist, some of them. Um, and the playlist might include my videos, but it also might include other people's videos. And you can see the, the mark that I've reached is I now have 1,000 subscribers, which is important 
in that uh, Google starts treating you differently at a thousand subscribers. I've got, I don't know, 250 or some videos. And when you have a channel, um, you can customize the channel and manage videos. And the, the channel ha can have its own name, a personalized name. Um, I'm not going to do how to do a channel, but um, I also, by the way, have, because I hit a thousand subscribers have unlocked the community. I haven't actually done anything, but it's a special way of communicating with subscribers, right? So my header doesn't look very good. But um, let's take a look at, I'm, I'm just going through, so I'm, I'm just randomly picking some people. Now, she spent as much time on her header as I did, right? You know, that's just a, just a picture. Um, let's look at, now here's somebody who spent a little bit of money maybe. Now, notice he's got a customized, I guess that's, it's hard to read, the guestlockgroup.com real estate advice and consultation. Notice that he's just got some some posts. I, I'm just picking some out randomly. Here's Ben Kinney, who's a big name uh, in another company. And his is just a picture that he's in uh, Bellingham, I think. And that's, that's just where he is. Let me look at her. Curator simply has their name. This, by the way, is a very good channel to follow. I'm just saying Curator is a very good channel to follow. Um, what else do we have here? That guy doesn't even have one. Here's a guy that actually does some decent training as well, some good training on real estate and video and marketing and that sort of thing. And maybe you're getting the idea where they've actually done something, right, to customize the channel. Uh, how many more do I have? He hasn't done anything. Here's, you know, some, you get a, you get the idea. So you might want to spend a little bit of time making your channel look good, right? And sometimes what you might do is look at what does your web page look like? Uh, do you have a blog? What does it look like? Um, you might want to make it look good. And sometimes you can see there's just pictures of people's faces. Sometimes you, there's a lot of variety. Sometimes people just have pictures of houses or parts in the background and their name, but you can, um, you ought to make it look good. Now, let's just talk about how do you make it look good, right? How would you do that? Well, one way is you could learn how to do it yourself. There's a website that has lots of videos, by the way, on how to do stuff. You, you may have heard of it. It's called YouTube. And if you go to YouTube and you were to just, you know, type in, here, let me just do this. I want to YouTube header, H-E-A-D-E-R, YouTube header, all right? And so how to make a YouTube channel banner, how to make a YouTube banner, how to create a YouTube banner, how to make a YouTube banner, you get the idea. Right, it's not like they're hiding, you know, the how to do this. And if you're no good at anything that involves computers and technology and things like that, a website that you might know about but want to look in to is something called Fiverr. And I'm just, I guess I'll, I'm going to log in. It's not set up for me to log in, but that's okay. So. Fiverr are, is a place where you can get people to do stuff. So if I were to go to Fiverr and I were to talk, type in you, you, <laughs> tube, banner, B-A-N-N-E-R, uh, -N -N and see, um, I will design Facebook cover, YouTube banner, an epic YouTube banner, designing YouTube banner, you, you, and people have pictures of banners they've done for people. You understand there's a lot of it here, right? And let's say this one is just something you happen to like because it says it's attractive design and I certainly would like that. And the basic is channel art, $15, right? Um, standard would be a, a bunch of things that you could use on all different social media. That's something to look into. Um, that's not very expensive, but it would give me something I could put on Twitter and Twitch and Facebook and everything else. Premium 
is um, they also are going to design a logo and an art icon for you. That's a whopping $40. Oh, yeah. Um, so if you're not good at this, find somebody who already has the software and knows how to use it. Right. But you might want to design a banner. Now, I have more than one site, YouTube, and um, I'm going to show some examples of others that are doing the same thing. But the site, the, the big site that I have, the one with a thousand subscribers, is really about coaching, training, mentoring. Let's just say it's about recruiting, right? I'm just, I'm going to say that, right? It's about recruiting. And so the kind of information I put on that side are related to my desire to recruit real estate agents all over the United States. Um, the other site that I have, which I haven't spent as much time on because I spend more time on coaching, training, mentoring, and recruiting than I do on selling real estate, right? It just, it just happens to be the other site I have is going to be designed as a typical real estate site, right? More for me to make some of these things that I'm going to show you in post. Um, but you need to work on the banner. You should have, there's a about me, right? Or your company. And you don't want to worry about oversharing it. You should have every link to everything. If you, your phone number, your email address, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, you're going to find there are some people that like to communicate one way or the other. They, they will Facebook message you or they'll DM you on Twitter or the, you know, the, some people will call and some people will text all of those links. Right, and you want them in to easily find you in the Digiverse, right? Email, phone, all of that stuff. Um, you should just make sure that your details have all of those links. Content. So eventually, um, eventually, we're going to. Uh, um, Um, eventually, we're going to have a broader base, but you might want to start with a target audience, right? Now, the way that, for example, the kind of videos you would make to a millennial who's a first-time homebuyer is different from the kind of videos you would make to a baby boomer that's selling their house different from the kind of videos you would make for an investor that was going to invest in real estate, different for people that are thinking of selling their homes in the near future. I understand all of those audiences, there would be different messages and different videos. Now, I'm not saying you can't eventually do all those, but why not pick one to begin with? And one of the things you're gonna find in order to get Google to um, uh, re re to promote you, to push you, in order to do that, one of the things they like on your YouTube channel is that you have a playlist. So as an example, let's say I'm going to start with buyers, first time buyers, millennial buyers, right? Now, what I would be posting are things that first time home buyers would be interested in. Right, I'm, we're going to talk about lead magnets and things like that. But the content, in order, I would be giving them a list of down payment assistance programs and special programs for first-time home buyers, and talking about what you need to do to buy a home. Right, you understand? I mean, that would be that kind of a content. Right now, um, of, so once I've made four or five videos on first-time home buyers, I would create a playlist called first-time home buyers, and it would have all of my videos. Um, and then you're, once you've identified that target, what kind of content? And we're gonna, I have lists of ideas of these, but are you gonna be making how-to videos or market updates? Are you gonna be interviewing people? That's, by the way, the easiest to do. I'm just saying, the interviewing is the easiest to do. Listing videos, neighborhood overviews, that's not an ex exclusive list, but it's just something. Um, I'm writing an offer for somebody. It just I'm just going to stop doing that. So why YouTube? And the answer is it's because Google will reward us if we're using YouTube right. And using YouTube right means search engine optimization. 
And the first thing you really need are to have the right keywords for YouTube. Now, one of the things that I've put as a handout is a list of real estate related keywords, right? But if we wanted keywords, what we are going to do is, I'll tell you the easiest way to do some of the keyword research, right? Let's say um, home, I'm just random, home buying. So the, notice what happens when I type in home buying. Look at what Google is telling me. See all those suggestions. Home buying process, home buying tips, home buying, home buying process explained, home buying 101. By the way, you may notice that my real estate career night, those of you that know that I do that every Monday is called real estate 101. There's a reason for that. Right? Uh, home buying process, start to finish, home buying mistakes, home buying 2020, home buying. Does everybody see what Google is doing for us? They're giving us a list of keyword phrases. That's all I had to do, right? Home buying, home selling, right? Uh, home selling process, home selling tips, home selling flow chart, home design images. I, I, you get mistakes, you get the idea, right? So a simple way of doing research is to simply go to YouTube and start typing it in and see what comes up, right? If I want to, um, work with investors, real estate investing, right? In for beginners with no money, investor, audiobook, trust strategies, real estate investing 101, just saying. A real estate interview, uh, investing 2020, uh, real, and you get the idea, right? So when we're, we're doing keyword research, one of the things that we would do is simply type it in and see what comes up. But let's go a little bit further. Let me, um, how about uh, real estate investing? Let me just pick something. So uh, anybody here, I know that guy. Yes, I recognize him. Um, there's obviously a lot of them. That's the bigger pockets dude. Um, Dave Ramsey, there, there's his stuff. So Charlie Chang is, I think he's down in Southern California. He um, actually has, he's very, has a lot of, a lot of videos. This one he did three months ago, he has 65,000 views, right? Now I'm just telling you, that's a lot, right? I, I don't know if my long running best video has that many views. Five successful real estate investing tips, 669,000 views. Now what we're going to do is look at it and um, uh, she's, by the way, a content uh, community influencer, content marketing. So when we look at it, I, I don't have it hooked up right now because it's a, this is a new computer, but I have a program called TubeBuddy. And what TubeBuddy does is when I find a video like this, it's actually going to show me what keywords this video has in their description, right? So it, it isn't necessarily obvious because you have, these are the three components, right? Not counting the video itself. You have the title, you have the description, and then you have keywords. Now the keywords are not apparent. They're not visible. Notice when I'm looking at it, I don't see any keywords. I don't see them but third-party software will show what they are, all right? So one of the things that I would recommend that you do is you look for people that have successful videos on the subject you're doing. How to become a millionaire through real estate investing, newbies, 1.1 million videos. Yeah, yeah. And so by using this other, other software, which if you're interested, if you're interested in doing this, I'd be willing to do a session for the people that I'm coaching and working with on how to actually implement this and show you some of the software um, to make this go a little bit quicker, but you can use software that will analyze people's videos and notice how some of them are animated, right, GIFs. So we want to get, we want people to click, right, on, on, on our, and that's called a thumbnail, right? Um, all right, so that was, 
real estate keywords for YouTube, make engaging videos. If people watch your video for a minute, let's say you make a 10, 15 minute video, and on average people last 30, 45 seconds before they click away, Google is going to stop showing people your videos. You just need to understand that, right? So you want to have bait, and sometimes this is called clickbait. And clickbait is when you have something that it's designed to get people to click on it, right? So for example, um, real estate marketing according to Taylor Swift, right? You see stuff like that. And people that are interested in Taylor Swift might click on it just to see how you tried to make that connection. But then if they figure out that this was just a scam to get you to click and to start watching their video and they click away, Google's paying attention. And if, you, and if people don't make it to the end of your video very often, if they leave too soon, they start, they start just pushing your video down and you don't want Google to push your video down. So what, what you want to do is to give people reasons to stay to the end. I have a special offer. You're going to save a lot of money. It's only good for a limited amount of time. Stay to the end. I'll talk to you about it. Right? You understand? We need to get people. We need you need to have enough good stuff so that people don't bolt right away because Google doesn't like that. And then using the keywords the right way. And what that would mean is that you would be using them in the title, you'd be using them in the description, you'd be using them in the keywords and you would be saying the words aloud during your video. This probably doesn't surprise anyone, but Google is listening to you. Google can understand what you say. So what that means is, is that your video is playing, Google is indexing the content of the video based upon the words that you're speaking. Right. So, and by the way, what you uh, should do is at the beginning of the video say, this is what I'm going to be talking about, right? And go through the list and that list should be keyword rich. Google pays attention to the first couple of minutes of your video because they want to see if what you're talking about matches what you say you're talking about. And if you if you say you're talking about real estate investing and becoming a millionaire, but for the first in the first two minutes you're talking about something else, Google is saying, nah, we don't want to show people this video, right? Because people are going to bolt. Marketing your videos. Do you have a link in your U uh, to your YouTube? Do you have a YouTube channel? Do you have a link to the YouTube channel in your email signature? Do you have it on your websites? Do you have it? on all of your other social media accounts or the about me where you can list it. Um, you know, what are you doing? You know, are you posting it on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter videos? What are you doing to get people to look at your videos? I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. So how do you get more views? Right. The most important part, there's, how do you get somebody to click on a video? Ask yourself, why do you click on some videos but not other videos? First of all, there's the thumbnail, right? And you'll notice that the ones that I was showing that had a lot of uh, watch, a lot of viewers, had an engaging thumbnail. It's usually a picture of a person, usually you, right? Would be you. And one of the things that I need to do more of is you have to make a bunch of faces. You have to look shocked and you have to look sad and you have to look angry and you look happy and you get a bunch of these and you put those in with the thumbnail, with the background and some words so that right there people can see it, right? You So the thumbnail is important. The title of your video, right? What are you calling it, right? You'll be judged right away by the title of your video, the description of it. Does the description contain the keywords that you're going for for this particular video? Um, have you created a playlist for those keywords, right? So for example, on my site, I have a basically a licensed preparation one, and then I have one that's designed for people that are in the business. 
but then I'm going to be adding that. There will be one for working with sellers and one for working with buyers eventually, and one for working with investors, and there may be one on listing credit. You get the idea, but start with making, start with that. And by the way, your playlist can include other people's videos. Now you might wonder, well, why does that help me? Well, if you've created a playlist of other people's videos, Google will index that. And if I'm searching for something that your playlist is on, Google will show me your playlist. So if I click on your playlist and I start watching, it's other people's videos, but on your, I'm watching the video on your website, your YouTube channel is what I mean. And there's going to be other videos from you there. I'm, I'm watching the playlist there. That's better than nothing. Do you write a blog post or guides on your website? Do you write blog post or guides on your website? I could have worded that better. Um, and you can embed your videos in them. Do you have a blog? Yes, you know, maybe, maybe not. This is an area I need to spend more time on, and I'm going to show you a hack, right? A hack for doing this. Um, but Google indexes blogs. Uh, Google, if you take a YouTube video and you embed it in a blog post and then put in all of what you talked about in the YouTube video, also in the blog post. So there's basically like the transcript of it, but there's also the video. That way Google can not only watch the video and listen to the video, Google can see your words. Now, let me just give you, this is, I, I, I know real estate agents like to see hacks, you know, trick plays and things like that. I'm gonna show you one. So I'm gonna go to my um, channel. And if you have a real channel, you have something called YouTube Studio. And you get different grades of this depending on how much you do. So here's one called how to launch a successful real estate career, right? By the way, I'm up to 1,006 subscribers. By the way, all of you that are listening to me, if you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's Upthink Real Estate. That's the YouTube channel name. Go there, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so that you're notified when I add a video. Um, I'm just saying, right? Just saying. So um, let me pick one of them, right? So I'm going to go to videos. So I've made a, uh, I did a class on how to launch, here, let me pick something that I really do want to put a blog on. I mean, that one wouldn't hurt, but um, well, let's see. Well, I'll just do, I'm just gonna go with this one. So let's say this was a career session and I wanted to create a blog post that's connected to the video. Right now, I have other videos that that's sort of a long one. Let me just see what is the how to pick a farm, listers last. How, to, how about this one? How to apply to get a California real estate license? Right. So I, I've gotten 39 views, which may not seem like a lot so far. Um, I get this sort of engagement because this is the you know anyhow it's the editor. So what I'm going to do is look at the details. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this link. By the way, what I'm about to show you works with any YouTube video. It works with some non-YouTube videos. And some of you are going to go, oh, really? <laughs> really? So what I, and, and there's a couple, what I want to do is I want to get a transcription of my video. Now, do you understand that could be a big pain? What are you going to do? Play it back and start typing away, listening to yourself. Hire somebody to transcribe your video. You know. So what you do is you copy the YouTube link, and then if you simply search YouTube to MP3, and this is one of the many sites that come up, YouTube to MP3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in that link. It's checking the video loading the video converting the video this usually this isn't uh, the other one was a much longer video we'd be watching this for longer than i need to 
And what, what's going to happen in a moment is it will have transcribed the video. Uh, I believe Rev will provide it. Somebody's saying that you can get for a couple of bucks. All right, we'll see. So what I'm going to do is download the MP3. Right? Uh, I know uh, we don't want. I know you don't like that, but trust. I know. I know. So I'm saving the MP3 file. So what I've done is I've borrowed all of the words from my video. This, by the way, works on other people's videos. Supposing I see a video by somebody on uh, what to look for in a property inspection. And I'm like, boy, that, he makes a lot of good points. She's got some good ideas. Um, remember, R&D is rip off and duplicate. This will work. This will work. All right, not perfectly, but it works pretty good. So first step is we take the video and we download the MP3 file by going to YouTube to MP3, one of the many ones, dropping it in. Now we have the MP3 file. Now, if you have Microsoft Office 365 or the Microsoft Office Online, if you don't, I, I don't know what to say, but um, I'm not. I think that many, much of this will work even in their free version, but since I'm paying for it, I don't, I don't have a free version. So I'm gonna show you. I've opened up Microsoft Word. Right, there's a point to all this. Right, I know this doesn't seem like I'm getting anywhere yet, but I've opened up Microsoft Word. This is the online version of Microsoft Office. And I'm gonna go over here to where it says dictate. And now I'm gonna go down to transcribe. And then I'm, it says, do you want to just start talking? No, I want uh, to upload a video. Um, and it says I've used, it's, it's, I've already used, uh, I've already used my allotment for this month, right? So I'm not going to be able to show you. Um, I've done 325 instead of, uh, maybe I need to buy. So let me just show you what what happens when you do that All right and so is this one of them no let me just go back here so here's a video that i had found called the complete social media marketing plan for real estate agents audio file this is the end result i can't do it now because i do this too much i don't know i may have to pay microsoft but what I did, the way I came up with this file is I found the video on YouTube. I copied the URL, created an MP3 file, downloaded it, opened up Microsoft Office, went to dictate, transcribed, uploaded that file and gave it a little while, not, you know, five minutes maybe. And what it did is it transcribed the whole file transcribe right now as you can see you're limited to 300 minutes i i exceed i i overdo things but that's a way of you getting the words from your video without you having to manually type them right i'm gonna have to figure out how i can increase my my number of hours but this is sort of a hack that i use is because it, it wouldn't hurt you if you're watching somebody else's video and in order to be good at youtube you need to watch other people's videos and write down notes right because that way you're much more likely to retain it and understand it um but then if you just would like to get a transcription of what they say this is um that's something that i do and yeah, I know there's other pay places that you could pay them, but this generally works fine for me. I've just I've just exceeded my I just exceeded my time. So you need to have a blogging platform in order to do this. You have, the social media and YouTube is social media. Why is YouTube social media? What is it about YouTube that makes it social? uh will ccs provide the same so he, ccs means closed captioning i don't know 
Right. I know that sometimes if I use Google Meet, it'll it'll record everything and, and give me a printout of the closed captioning. It's not that it, there is what, what, what Ken was mentioning is in YouTube, there's a way of turning on closed captioning and then there's a way of capturing it. My belief is, is that the Microsoft Office system is, works better, but you under Social media, what is it, I'm, I'm going to go back to this, that makes YouTube social media? So we know why Facebook is supposed to be social. It's really anti-social media. But why is Facebook social media? Because people can comment and react back and forth. So why is YouTube considered to be social media? It's because people can comment and interact with the videos. By the way, your goal is to get people to comment on your videos. If people are commenting on your videos and you're commenting back, then you Google will see that and they will raise your status and show them. What we want is for Google to be pushing our videos at people that are searching in the areas that we have keywords for. That's what we want, right? now. Where I'm going with this is, is that YouTube is a social medium, but you ought to be promoting this on all of your others, like on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, all of them. If you're a member of any of the discussion groups like Quora or Reddit, you should be you should be including your videos. Blog posts. So let me, that's where I was going. So do you have a blog? Do you have one? Um, if the answer is no, no, I don't have one. Um, can you get one for free? The answer is yes. There are free blogging platforms. Um, Google has one called Blogger, which is free, but there's a bunch of them, right? You could pay a little bit, Squarespace, Wix. There, there's a bunch of them that you could, there, there's a lot of free blogging platforms. Um, you can spend more money and get integrated blogging and, and squeeze pages and stuff with some, there's some websites that do that for realtors, cost about $180 a month. Um, but the point where I'm going with this is that you might want to have a blog, right? Now, if the website that you have, I have a website through a company called Elevate and I have a blog, um, they sometimes post something, but I can post something too. If you're with a big box company, you may have access to a blog. If you don't have a blog, you could get a free blog. You could get a just about free blog, which is like WordPress, right? So Blogger, which is a Google product, is sort of considered the training wheels of blogging, right? Then there's WordPress, and then you can have customized blogs. But uh, the idea is, is that the blog is also a way for you to put out content that people will find because Google will index it. We'll search for it. What else do I want to do? Um, best practices. Consistent visual branding. You should have a YouTube intro. Uh, I'm going to show you, well, I mean, maybe I'll show some examples, but if I go to Fiverr, and I type in intro, YouTube intro. Um, do I find anybody? Um, yeah, I've seen those kind of intros, those kind of intros. So here are a whole bunch of people that will make, that's a little scary, uh, different kinds of YouTube intros. So uh, I'm working on that, a YouTube intro. It shouldn't be very long and it shouldn't be the first thing, right? So what you do is in your, the video starts and you talk about what it is you're going to talk about. I'm going to be covering these things today, right? You say those words because Google is listening. Also, people are less likely to check out during that. Then you, you're in, then your your little promoter, your little video intro, you know, where the, the, the animation or whatever, your logo appears in out of smoke or whatever in the middle, whatever you want to do, it drips down from the ceiling. And then you start into the actual video. You're going to need thumbnails, titles and subtitles, animations, the YouTube banner, and then that's that all ought to be consistent, right? So that when somebody sees your thumbnail, 
which is that image of the video that it's like it's easy to identify as you. Don't over promote yourself. So let's say you're making a YouTube video about buying or selling a house. Let's say first time home buyers. And I keep saying, hey, if you're a first time home buyer, give me a call today. I can show you how to get more house for less money. You know, call, call me, call me, call me, email me, reach out to me. I'm here waiting for you to you understand that's not what people want, right? That's not why they're on YouTube. So what that turns people off. If you focus on their content, and then you have more subtle things. Like we're going to have calls to action, but you'd say down below, there's a link to this, there's a link to that. If you'd like to set up an appointment, if you'd like to download my free ebook, um, just saying. So a call to action are things that you can say in your video that would get people to click on something. This is sometimes called a lead magnet, right? So what would be an example? Right. Well, let's say you have a home inspection checklist. So you're talking about home inspections and what to look for and what not to look for. By the way, do you think you could find a home inspector that would be open to your interviewing them about home inspections? What do you think? You think you could find a home inspector that would be interviewed about home inspections? Right? I'll bet like all of them would probably do that. So you can make a list of questions and you can ask them and, uh, and then do you have a home inspection checklist? Do you have something? If you're interested, click on the link below. I'll send you the free home inspection checklist, right? Or you say to people, leave me a comment. Say, I want your home inspection checklist. Or say, Mike, you're the greatest teacher I've ever seen. Say something and I'll, then I'll give you the checklist. You, you understand we want them to do something. Now, we want them to make comments on our videos because Google's going to like it, even if they're, they're going to like it. We also would like them to give us their contact information so that they can become a lead in our customer relationship management system. And typically that is using something called a lead magnet, which is I'm going to give you something if you sign up for something. And so you always want to tell people to subscribe and to click on the notification bell, putting in your buttons in your video so that they know that you're on uh, Facebook and Twitter and there's actually buttons you can click on. You have links in the description that would take people to your Twitter and your Facebook, whatever. You direct video, you have website called, you send people to your website um, from your, your page. Um, you want people to share and comment, and you offer them something in exchange, the lead magnet, right? And there's a lot of examples of that. Um, if you were to just Google search lead magnets, these are sometimes called squeeze pages. Again, there are turnkey companies that do this for real estate agents. Easy Agent Pro is one. It's about $180 a month, right, for a website that's basically a bunch of pages for people to sign up for stuff, but they rank your content and stuff. It's actually, you know, not that bad. Um, editing. You can, so I'll show you what I've done. Can I do this while I'm recording? Um, my videos, I'm still in the infant stage of making videos, even though I've made a thousand of them. Um, I, I, I'm still, you know, progressing. And what I tend to do is what you're seeing now, which is I make slides because I can look at the slide and I know what I'm going to say and the camera is right there and that makes it easy for me. Um, that's not necessarily the end result that I want to get to, right? But um, what I do now, and you can see this on some of my videos, is I will start out using software that you probably already have, right? This is my, this is another hack. I should have like a hack alert that, you know, this is another hack, right? This is a program you may have heard of before. It's called Zoom. Now, why, why Zoom? Well, I can create a new meeting in Zoom, right? Now, it's not going to like it that my, you know, my, my video is being used. But if I create a Zoom meeting, can I record the meeting? And the answer is yes, there's a little record button there. All right. So what I do, and, and why Zoom? 
And the answer is, is because Zoom allows me to have virtual backgrounds, right? And so I have a background that looks like a real estate office in the back, right? Which is, but I could upload, if I click on this little button here, I could upload backgrounds. Now Google Meet has a background, um, doesn't work as well as Zoom's virtual backgrounds. Yeah, I have a green screen and I have a, a, a thing to hold it up. It, it's just more steps. But what I will do is I'll make a video. I have the video background, right? I'll make a video with all it is, is the webcam, right? Just me talking to the video. So thank you for, you know, for thank you for watching my video today. We're going to be talking about how to set up a successful YouTube channel for real estate agents. We're going to cover why you need to be on YouTube. We're going to talk about best practices to get the greatest number of subscribers and how to get leads and how to convert them. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I'm saying that first on Zoom with my virtual background recording it. And then when I'm done and it doesn't have to make another video this time screen sharing and i'll pick out what it is so let's say my video i'm using just my slide deck i would click on that now there's a video with me i can move me around right there's a little picture of me talking which i could put in any corner it's now recording the powerpoint presentation when i'm done it downloads it All right now that i have that so now i have two videos Right now, I could have a third one. I could have in the middle, which this is coming, my animated, you know, intro. It flies across the screen. I may have an end period at the something at the end. Thanks for watching. Click on this. Click on that. I've got a, you know that sort of thing. Don't miss the next one. And then once I've done that, I just put it all together using free software. So this is a relatively new computer, and yeah, I got it a newer computer for YouTube, it's got a lot more RAM, 24, 24 uh, megabytes. It's got a, a, a decent processor, um, but I use this for making the videos. And this version of Windows didn't come with Windows Video Editor. You have to download it, right? And so there's a video editor that you can download. Um, I'm not even sure what that one is. Is this a different one? Oh, this actually looks like this is the one I was looking for. It must have come with a new update. So what I would do is I, this is free. In most of my videos, by the way, this is the editor I used. Now I have other free video editors, but this is like really easy. You click on add a project, right? You call it, you call it something, right? You add, um, you have to add stuff, right? It's Google, I mean, uh, Microsoft is adding stuff. so. If I click on add from my PC, I can go and find the videos that I've downloaded, right? Which are usually in the document section under Zoom. And so if I open this up, there is a video, right? I just found it, it's added the file, right? So I can drag it down. It's a short 45 minute long video. And over here, when I click play, it's going to start showing. So you can see I was getting set up. I hadn't started yet. And what I can do with this video is using this free software, notice it allows me to trim it, to split it, right? Now there's a lot of other effects, but I'm, I don't have time for all of that. So what I can do is if I have a period at the beginning where I, I restart a couple of times, then I finally do it right. And then there's a period at the end while I'm fumbling around to turn off everything, I can trim those out. So what I end up with is just the video of me doing the introduction, right? And then eventually, once I've got that, that goes down into one of the frames, the other thing goes into, and when I've added them all, I click finish video, export the video, and out it goes as a video. Um, no sound. Is that is that a is is uh, can other people is there no sound can everyone else hear me? Anyone else saying they can't hear me? 
if you can't hear me say something. Your sound is back now. All right. It may be because I was bouncing around within these different programs. All right. I'm getting, we can hear audio is clear. So does everybody say, and this is free. This is built into Windows. All right. If you want to upgrade, um, what is the other one called? Sky. Uh, anyhow, I have other, I'm not going to, I don't have time to go through all that. I have other editing programs as well. I have other editing programs. So eventually, I'm going to get better at this, which means uh, I have the green screen and I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to have an introduction. I'm, I'm, up, I'm working on this. But um, that's a simple way to make videos. And by the way, I, I think I'm, I've got a, uh, what am I? Be, let me just talk about a couple of other things and then I'll wrap this up. Um, be consistent. Some of my videos, and I used to get you know disappointed. I'd have 50 people, 30 people, 100 people maybe, if I was lucky, watch a video. But you know, when you think about it, how much did I have to pay in order to get 30, 50, or 100 people to watch my video? I didn't have to pay anything. Um, and uh, what was the editing software you just shared? I was asked. It's Windows video editor and i believe the macintosh macs have a version of this All right windows video editor I, I spent nothing on it but i also have um there's others if you google searched free video editing you're going to find it but i figured I don't even have to go beyond what was installed on the computer in order to edit videos. So back to only 30, 50, maybe 100 people watch a video. How much did I have to spend in order to get those 30, 50, or 100 views? How much did I have to spend? And the answer is nothing. And by the way, one of the reasons I've sort of come to life on my video um, on my YouTube is that I was just posting stuff for years. It was just stuff. I, I looked at it as a place to depository, right? A place to store videos that other people could watch later. And I really wasn't thinking about anything else, but something clicked when I realized that at a thousand subscribers, you become eligible. There's more that you have to do for Google ads on your video. Now, in addition to 1,000 subscribers, which I've got, you need also 4,000 hours of watch time in the last 12 months. That I don't have, right? I need, I'm about a third of the way to that. So I need to get the viewership up so that my watch time is up. As soon as you reach that point of 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, you can monetize your site. That how about this for real estate marketing? They pay you. They pay you to market. Right? And the other thing, even if you're like, well, it's not going to be a lot of money, and I really don't want to make money on Google Ads. I don't like Google Ads. And I how about this? Google will show more of your videos if your channel is monetized. Do you understand? Where does Google get their money? They get the money from running ads on people's videos. So if you reach that level where they you can now run ads on your videos and Google is deciding what, who, whose video should we show this person? Should we show them your video where they don't run ads? Should they do that? Or should they show them my video where Google has ads? What, what, what do you think Google will do when confronted with that choice? And obviously they're gonna show the video that they have ads on. What would it cost to get a hundred clicks through pay per click? It depends, right? Three hundred to six hundred dollars total. How about this? It depends on what the keyword is. If you go to Google AdWords and you're looking for what does it cost homes for sale in San Jose, what does that keyword phrase cost? It's probably hundreds of dollars a click, right? If you're going to buy traffic from Google, that's very, that could be very expensive. So you're getting 50 
25, 100. That's better than you're doing now, right? Better than you're doing now. Plus, if you have lead magnets, you start capturing people, you follow up with people. And sometimes people will say to you, wow, I'm talking to you. I, you know, you're famous. I watch all of your videos. And I actually was having a transaction with another agent where there was a little bit of conflict and he went and watched YouTube videos before he talked to me. And then he's like, wow, this guy knows a lot about real estate. I don't know. But sometimes clients and, and people will say, I've seen your videos. I feel like I know you. Does everybody get the idea of where we're going with it? Um, other things, evergreen informational content is something that you design deliberately so it's not topical. In other words, it's not talking about the pandemic, there's no COVID-19, you don't talk about 2021, you don't talk about the market. And the reason is, is because it could become evergreen, which means five years from now, people could still be watching that video, counting to your, you know, your collection. And then finally, there's, you know, some equipment, um, I'm using a um, Logitech a, a Pro um, webcam. It's an older one. I have a microphone, which is, this is a Yeti, older Yeti microphone. Um, there's, they're now blue. I have a ring light. Um, I, I, I showed you my, my fancy video editing software. And I, um, what else? Um, I don't know. I have a green screen. All of that stuff didn't cost very much, but that's just some of the equipment. If you're interested in YouTube and you're in my coaching program and you'd like to go on the journey with us, right, in order to optimize the channel and make videos and do all that, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to share with you what I do know and show you who I'm learning from. And uh, anyhow, that's it. Anything else? Any questions? Was that enough to last you guys for one day? I hope so, because you've again worn me out. So that's, uh, I've gone over time, that's it. Um, tomorrow we're having another presentation from Jody Hatano. Learn about loans, the more you know. Uh, by the way, the video, the, the last thing I did with her last week, I recorded it using my software, uh, put thumbnails on it, put a description on it, and uploaded it to my YouTube channel, content. Right, I have content which I got from letting a lender talk, right? and I now have content that I can share. Uh, thank you so much, uh, much appreciated. Thank you guys. Uh, if you're interested in making more money in real estate and you want to talk about ways to do that, reach out to me. I help people do that. Talk to you later. See you tomorrow.